Hello. Good evening. Hi, teacher. Hi, good evening. How are you today? Fine, you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. How was your vacation? Um, good. I spent time with my family. Okay, nice. Did you do something interesting? Did you go to an interesting place or cook something different? No, really. Uh, my family decided to stay home. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's better. And the rest of you guys? Okay. I know that it's earlier, so like one minute to start the class, but yeah. I wanted to test everything is working okay, so that's why. And there was an update with this uh, tool that we are using for the meetings, so I have to run it and then restart my computer, but fortunately we are here on time. Okay, so uh, how are you doing with the platform? I didn't hear a few during the vacation and that's okay. <laughs> but I hope that you have work on the platform. Do you remember what is the last topic that we studied? No? No, teacher. Okay, so. <laughs> That's fine, I know. Um, uh, I was a member of the beach. <laughs> oh, did you go to the beach? Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, I okay. went to the beach with my family. Was it crowded? Yes. Did you enjoy it? Yes, I enjoy and swim. That's good day with my family. Yes, going to the beach is kind of relaxing. I, I don't know, it, it has a special powers. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I'm going to share the presentation. I sent it yesterday. I remember that I did. So the last topic that we were studying before going to that precious break <laughs> was, oh, well, we talk about how some things have changed from the past to now. And we said that for this, um, we are going to be like combining three different tenses in English. Uh, as we were working with the past, uh, we, uh, this, um, we realized that we need to review the ED pronunciation endings. So for that, I included this in the presentation. It's a little chart just to, just to make a recap on this. Okay, so I'm just going to explain how, what we have here. And then you can go to the link that you have here and you can listen to the audio for pronunciation. You can do it in your free time. But just remember that in Simple Pass, we have three different um, pronunciation and then, right? So the only one that requires kind of like, we can say that it's an extra syllable are the ones that we pronounce it at the end. Uh, if, this, if the base verb end in one of these sounds, like T or D, like for example, want ends in T, right? And the end, the verb end has the D ended, right? So in these two cases, we are going to add an extra syllable when we're pronouncing them, right? For example, want, for the simple past, it would be pronounced like 
wanted, right? It's like an add in extra syllable, wanted, ended, ended. So, uh, and then we have the other two pronunciation ending, that t and the, and it has to do with the, if the sound is unvoiced or voiced. Can you explain me what does it mean when we refer to a voiced um, or unvoiced? No? Do you remember? No worries. When we say unvoiced, it's when you pronounce them, you don't feel like a vibration in your throat, right? For example, if you say hop, hop, hop. But if you say play, you can touch your throat and say play, play. It produces a vibration here in your throat, right? Play, and you say laugh, 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 laugh. No vibration. So it means that it's unvoiced. When they are unvoiced, the pronunciation in the simple past ending is with t at the end. Like for example, hop, we say hopped, laugh, hop. laughed, fax, faxed, Laugh. wash, washed, Fax. watch, washed, like, liked, right? And when the sound, when it is a voiced sound, the ending is th, right? Like play, played, allow, allowed, there, there, right? So yeah. those are the three endings and that is the difference. And if you want more information or you want to listen to the recording, you can visit this link that I included here in the presentation. Questions in regards of this? No questions? What it means, beg, I don't remember, teacher. It's like mendigar. Okay, I yes. thought it was like rogar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of like the same, right? <laughs> rogar or <Okay>. mendigar. <laughs> yeah, it's basically the same thing. And allow, allow. Y los mendigos are allowed? beggars. Allowed is permitir. Permitir, yeah. allow. Okay, uh, any other question? Your questions are important. Don't fear afraid to ask, okay? You're free to ask whatever it's necessary here, right? Okay, so we're going to move and let's see. This is what we are going to be doing here is uh, to use time contrast, right? So we're going to be practicing the with past, present, and future. To do so, we're going to continue with the video that we have in the platform. Just let me share my screen. All right, so we got here. Oh, it's slow. It's, I think it's still vacation, but no. Let me share my sound. And we go with this one, time contrast. which are used in the past, present, and future. Time contrasts. Past. A few years ago, not many people lived here. Present. These days, the population is growing so fast. Future. Soon, there will be a lot of shopping malls. People used to shop at grocery stores. Today, people shop at supermarkets. In 20 years, people might buy groceries by computer. 50 years ago, people walked everywhere. Nowadays, people drive their cars instead. In the future, people are going to use cars even more. 
We noticed you wrote some time expressions related to past, present, and future. Well done. Now let's talk a bit about time contrast. This helps us to talk about perhaps a same situation that we have lived over the years and we want to make reference since it happened, taking it to our present and imagining it in a future. The trick here is for us to use the verbs properly in its right tense along with time expressions. Let's go over the chart. In the first column we talk about past and we use time expressions like a few years ago, or people used to, or 50 years ago, and our verbs are in past. We used lived and walked. Let's move on to the present and here we use these days, today or nowadays, and of course our verbs are is growing, shop and drive, which are in the present. Last but not least, we have our future using expressions such as soon, in 20 years, in the future. Therefore, we use verbs in future, will be, might buy, are going to use. Time contrast is easy to use, just double check on your verbs. Think about it as one sentence per tense. We will now give you more time expressions that you may use with each tense. Past expressions, at that time, in the past, then. Present expressions, currently, in the meantime, now. Future expressions, in the next couple of years, next, in the near future. Now we want you to write a short description about how has your life changed using the expressions below. Make sure you do it and present it to your teacher to make sure you did it right. Okay, so uh, now that we watched the video, I'm sure that you already did that, right? So, um, do you have any questions or any doubts? Questions? No question. Okay, so no question. I will give you a couple of minutes for you to complete the sentences in column A with an appropriate form in column B. Okay, uh, for example, we have the first one already done. It says about 60 years ago. The complement is with the letter H. Let's see, many TV shows were in black and white. Okay. So I'll give you uh, some time for you to develop this exercise and then we're going to check. Um, let's go ahead and do it in groups so you can discuss how to match them in the most appropriate way. So let me uh, create the groups. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay.
Okay, so I see that everybody's back again. Uh, did you finish the exercise? Yes. Okay, so let us check your answers. Uh, the first one was already done, which is letter H, number one, letter H, a volunteer for number two. Me, teacher. Okay, Stephanie? Number two is letter D, before the automobile, people didn't travel as much from city to city. Yes, exactly right. Excellent. Jesus, number three. Uh, before there were supermarkets, people used to shop at small grocery stores. That is correct. Letter A. Thank you so much. Luis, number four. In most offices this day, people work more than four, 40 hours a week. That is completely correct. Letter F, number four, it's F. Very good. Uh, do we have a volunteer for number five? I got David. Uh, the number five in many cities nowadays, pollution is becoming a serious problem. All right, that's completely correct. Thank you so much, Rafael. Continue, please. In number six. <laughs> In many classrooms today, students are learning with interactive whiteboards, letter C. That is completely right. Thank you so much. Number seven, volunteer. Seven. Okay, Andrew. Sure. Okay. Seven. Yeah, okay. please. In, in the next 100 years, uh, 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 one hundred oh, one hundred years. Uh, uh, there will be probably be cities in space. Yes, that's correct. There is, and the last one, number eight, volunteer. Me? Okay, thank you. Okay. And the number eight, sometimes in the near future, I choice, uh, I don't know, is my, is I wrong? Letter B, pollution is becoming a serious problem. Mm. That or, was already used? Mm, maybe. Okay. Maybe. The letter G was the one that was left. So, <laughs> yes, letter G. Doctors might find a cure for the common cold. Oh, cold. Okay. Okay, good. Now we have another exercise. Let's check here. Okay, here we are. Now for the next exercise, we are going to complete the sentences using the words given and ideas from the pictures. So you see here we have some words like, for example, these days, this expression is telling you that you're going to use simple present, right? These days. So the, that is the, the guide that you have. And we have the word beach, and then we have Mars, and uh, you can see the pictures to have a better idea or, or to, to on what to write. So we have here beach, vacation, sun, and fun. And then we have a picture of Mars and this is enjoying the stars. It's like uh, um, indicating that there would be probably trips to Mars or something like that. So we have this day, people go to the beach on vacation. In the future, they might go to Mars on vacation, okay? So let's, um, I'm going to give you some minutes for you to complete number three, 
two, three, four, and five. And then we are going to share what you have.
Have you finished? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. I'm finished, teacher. Okay, so would you like to share number two with us? What do you have for number two? Okay. Uh, in the past, people to collect rec records. Nowadays, they have a phone and download music. Okay, very good. Manuel, do you have something different for number two? Hello. Uh, a few years ago, the people work in, in their office and, and work in his desktop PC. Today, the people uh, work in in cualquier lugar in in, in any, any place any place in any place and work uh, any. from tablet pc yeah they can work in anywhere just to get um connect to that uh, network right um Ruben, do you have something different here um yeah in the past people chose to buy a vinyl record to collect 
uh, songs. Now, nowadays, they prefer download the music online. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you got the original tape, you were like rich. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could interchange the tapes, right? So, yeah, now you save the space and you save money with that, yeah. Right, so, um, uh, let's see, I saw someone raise a hand and then, what was it? A volunteer? Byron, okay, Byron. Hi, okay, for me, on the a century or more ago, women wear long dresses every day. These days, women are wearing short skirts. Okay, excellent. Well done. Thank you so much, Byron. Uh, next, volunteer. Me? Yes. Okay. Nowadays, you can rent an apartment in a building with 20 floors. Sometimes in the future, could be rent in a 250,000 2, floors. Okay, um, 2,050 floors. Very good. David, would you like to share something with us? Um, nowadays, buildings commonly have 20 floors. Sometime in the future, uh, buildings might be 250 floors or more. All oh, right, excellent. Good. Any other volunteer? You can share any of these sentences. If you have something different that you would like to share. No more volunteers? Me, teacher. Okay. Uh, number, number four, a century or more ago, woman, woman uh, used to wear long dress. This day, a uh, woman preferred uh, wear short skirts. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, now, well, the next thing that we have here in the platform is the for the six is pronunciation, intonation in statement with time phrases. Um, okay, let's watch this. Oh, my phone is noisy now. Where am I? Okay, next pronunciation. Oh, that's conditional. Okay, that's this one. Intonation. Share sound. Okay. Did it feature that came here? Teacher. We can hear anything. No, I don't listen. Really? Oh, let <laughs> me share the sound again. Yes, it's getting okay. some troubles. Thank you. It's said. Uh, Ready to work on your now? Notice the intonation in yes. this statement yes. beginning with a time phrase. Pronunciation. Intonation in statements with time phrases. Part A. Listen and practice. 
Notice the intonation in these statements beginning with a time phrase. In the past, very few people used computers. Today, people use computers all the time. In the future, there will be a computer in every home. Can you now complete these statements with your own information? Read the statements to your teacher. As a child, I used to. Two years ago, I. In five years, I. Okay, that's in regards of pronunciation with time expressions or time phrases. Um, the main idea of this is that whenever we are using time phrases, the intonations tend to be like this in the past. So um, like uh, focusing on, the, on this, just to, um, to make clear that we are talking about something in the past, something in the present, or we're talking about something that may uh, or might happen in the future. So the intonation tend to be raising, right? In the past, right? In the past, very few people use computers. So as you see, uh, the, the focus is here in the time phrase. Today, there is sounds like stress, right? In the future, yeah? Questions about this? No. No? No. Okay. Well, uh, moving on to the next slide, we are going to be using the conditional sentences with if clauses. Uh, by any chance, is there something that you remember about conditionals? What can you tell us or what do you remember about conditionals? No? No ideas? Is the if you? Uh huh. We use if. Uh -huh. Yeah. And because? Um, yeah, sometimes we can use because. But yeah, when you see a conditional, we use if. Because the if, it's saying C. The of, but like condition, no es un sí afirmativo, right? Es un, ese if es un sí de condición. Si esto pasa, ¿cuál será la consecuencia, right? So, uh, we're going to be it's starting the situation. It's a possibility. It's uh, maybe we're talking about an unreal situation or something that might happen or may not happen in the future. It's like uh, we are talking like a cause and effect, right? So uh, we have this exercise, yes, to introduce the topic and to practice a little bit more. Um, now, if you get a high paying job, what would be some of these consequences? There are some possible consequences of getting a high pay, paying job. Like for example, you'll have more cash to spend. You'll be able to buy anything you want, which is not true. You'll be able to travel at first class you may have uh, to pay higher taxes. You'll be able to donate more to charities. Uh, pe more people may want to be your friend. You may get your own office. You won't have as much stress in your life. People ask you for a loan. You'll have a lot more free time. Is there any question in regards of vocabulary before we proceed with this exercise? No? 
No? Teacher. Da, no, no. Uh, that is prestamo. Prestamo. Yeah, the dinero. Hey. Teacher, yeah. charities is like a, uh, well, I don't know. Caridad. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah, that's. Okay, now let's uh, think about this and tell me at least three. What do you think that they are the three possible consequences of getting a high paying job? I'll give you uh, one minute to analyze and select three of them. Select three of them and tell me for you what are three possible consequences of getting a high paying job. Okay, volunteers to share your um, responses. There's no correct answers or incorrect answers in this exercise. It's about your opinion. What do you think? Luis? <laughs> Me? Okay. Uh, if I get a high paying job, uh, I have more cash to spend. And I might have to pay high, higher taxes and more people may want to be my friend. Okay, very well done. Thank you so much for sharing. What about you, Jesus? What do you think? If I get a high pay, paying job, I be able to buy anything, the, anything I want. I be able to travel first class and I might have to pay higher that taxes taxes okay. okay excellent thank you so much for sharing uh, do we have any other volunteer me uh, I if I get a high paying job I save some money to travel in vacation to Bora Bora. Wow. <laughs> Different. Excellent. Okay, continue. It's my dream. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah. Um, any other volunteer? Uh, me, teacher. Okay, Henry. Me uh, if if I get a, a high paying job, uh, cool tripping, they are traveling. Okay. Traveling, traveling to the Qatar for World Cup football. Oh, <laughs> nice. 
Nice dream. <laughs> You're the same yes. brand. Okay, start saving money. <laughs> Great. Okay. okay, now Stephanie. If you get a high paying job, you'll have your own house and car. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so let's move. Uh, okay, uh, we will watch the video and um, to listen to the explanation about uh, how are we going to be using these conditional sentences with if clauses. And then we're going to discuss the video. <laughs> If I study, I will pass my exam. Follow me in the structure. If clause. Hi, we're about to study conditional sentences. A conditional sentence is formed by a possible situation and a consequence. Pay attention to the audio program for more explanation. Conditional sentences with if clauses. Possible situation plus simple present. If you get a high paying job. Consequence plus future with will, may, or might. You won't have to work as hard. If you get a high paying job, you won't have to work as hard. If you don't have to work as hard, you'll have a lot more free time. If you have a lot more free time, you might get bored. If you get bored, you may have to look for another job. The first conditional is a structured used for talking about possibilities in the present or the future. We will explain you how this conditional is formed and when it is used. When we talk about this conditional, which is called first conditional, by the way, we will divide it in two parts, if clause and main clause. In conditional, we use the word if. So we say, if I study, I will pass my exam. Follow me in the structure. If clause, if plus subject plus verb in simple present. Main clause, subject plus will plus verb. Let's work on more examples. If you save money, you will go on a trip. If she speaks English, she will have a better job. If we exercise, we will be healthy. All of these examples show a possibility of what might happen if. I will give you some possible situations. Try to give me your consequence using the structure learned. Don't forget to write them on our discussion box. If you study English, if you lose your job, if you have children, don't forget to write your consequence using the future will, may, or might. Okay, so that was the video about the if clauses or conditionals, right? Do you have any question about that? Is something that is not really Me. clear? Yes? Byron? Yes? Oh, yes. Uh, could you please remember us when we have to use may and when we have to use might. Okay. Because I think that you. is like the same, but I'm not really sure right now. So that's why, if you can rephrase that. Yes, yeah, sure. Excellent. Um, well, they are the same. Uh, the only difference is that we use may and might. Might is a weaker possibility. And um, may is stronger than might when we are referring to that possibility in the future. That is the only difference, but the meaning is the same. Uh, depending the um, how sure you are 
of, of that prediction or what you want to express in that possibility, you will use may or might, right? Um, eh, básicamente es lo mismo, sí. Pero usamos eh, might cuando, eh, may, sorry, este que está acá, may, cuando esa posibilidad que estamos hablando de que es más fuerte y el might es como, mm, estoy tan seguro, ok? So el might es como más débil, ¿verdad? So, eh, let's say I, I live, uh, vivo en una zona de mucho tráfico, ya más o menos conozco el tráfico, entonces, si me preguntan, eh, ¿a qué horas crees que puedes eh, venir? Right. Entonces, si digamos que estamos en la mañana, yo puedo decir, Ay, ya conozco el tráfico, entonces ya sé que más o menos a las 10 de la mañana está un poco más tranquilo. So, I can say, I may, I may be there at 10, 10.30, around that, right? Pero si no conozco mucho, no estoy tan segura, voy a decir might. I might be there at 10 or 10.30. Entonces el receptor de mi mensaje va a entender que no estoy tan segura de que eso pase si yo uso might. Pero si uso may, la posibilidad es más fuerte. No sé si me expliqué bien, Byron. Yes, yes, I got it now. Thank you. Okay. I, I already write it down the, the, the difference that it's for the stronger possibility and a weak possibility. Uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> kind of okay. like that. <laughs> Thank you, but I got it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Any other question? So then, uh, Bueno, ya se nos acabó el tiempo, pero esto es como ya para introduction, right? Mañana vamos a ver más cómo se estructuran eh, las dos cláusulas. Eh, podemos en, en la de la consecuencia, de la, tenemos la, la, de la, pos, la de la possible situation, la cláusula u oración de la situación posible es la que lleva el if. Luego del if va el sujeto y luego el verbo en presente simple. Por ejemplo, acá, if you get a high paying job. Y luego la consecuencia. En la de la consecuencia vamos a usar will, uh, will have, will be, want, or may, or might. Cualquiera de esos va a ir en la cláusula de la consecuencia. Pero mañana vamos a practicar más esto. Vamos a hacer un review. Y vamos a hacer ejercicios también respecto a esto. Okay, so thank you so much for joining today's section and uh, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you, take care. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.